In the first episode, we designed and implemented a keyboard controlled player character and we learned how easy it is to add physics to the game if you understand the fundamental rules of 2D movement in Unity. Let's expand the game map, make it larger and more diverse and implement a cinematic pixel perfect camera to follow the player around. With background tile map game object selected here and tile palette window here, I select world tile palette. I will continue using these two patches of tiles. Grass surrounded by dirt and dirt surrounded by grass. This tile map offers much more and we could create more scenes here. We only have one sample scene so far. We could set this cave entrance as a collider with an event that will transition us to another game scene, for example. And in there we could use another set of tiles to make a distinct level. So many possibilities here. For now, I will just take the nine grass tiles and I will roughly outline some grass patches in the world. Make sure background is selected here. We want to draw on the background layer. If you also select it here, it will be highlighted like this. Now I will fill this space with a block of nine dirt tiles. Doing it this way would give us a repeating pattern, so I will use the random brush we created earlier. You don't have to follow what I'm doing here. Use your own world design ideas. The only goal here is to make the background layer larger than the area that the game camera can see so that we can walk around with the player and have the game camera follow us. The process of creating a world using a tile map can be automated by using, for example, something called the rule tiles, where the edges of the grass would be automatically filled by Unity based on the shape of the grass patch based on some rules that we predefine. Then I can make large areas and multiple levels quickly. I select collision objects layer here to tell Unity which tile map object we want to draw on. If I also select it here, we will get everything drawn on that layer highlighted. So far, only these two blocks create collisions. I could choose a cave block like this, draw it on the collision objects layer, and it will automatically create an impassable barrier for the player. I still have my random brush selected here, so I'm actually drawing dirt tiles. I need to go back to default brush. Now, collision objects selected in these two places still. I can design my cave walls. I delete this one. Big block of dark tiles. Now some bottom tiles here. I need to get used to this tile set to understand how the cave blocks connect. I keep going left, side piece here, like this. Now I can do the other side. These four, and I go all the way to the right, and a corner piece here. I test it. To actually walk there, we need a game camera to follow the player. In Unity, we can simply take the main camera game object here and I drag it over the player, like this. I make the preview larger. OK, so making the camera follow the player takes only one click in Unity. Maybe some of you didn't expect it would be this easy. <laughs> now we can walk down and explore the bottom edge we just created. Player is colliding with the cave tiles. Perfect. Notice how the shadow at player's feet doesn't even touch the cave walls. I would prefer the collision area to be a little bit down to enforce the perspective. I would actually prefer if the player could walk maybe half of its body behind these bottom cave tiles. I highlight my collision objects here. I want to move this entire cave block from collision objects layer to foreground objects layer so that it doesn't trigger collisions and it's drawn in front of the player. While I have collision objects selected here, I can use this tool called Pick or Marquee Select New Brush. This allows me to click and drag my mouse over all these tiles and now I can draw this identical block again wherever I need it. I want it drawn on foreground objects layer in exactly the same position. So now I have this identical block of tiles drawn on two layers on top of each other. I want to delete it from the collision layer. I select collision objects here. I increase the brush area like this and I select the eraser tool. I completely delete this from the collision objects layer. Now I pick, let's say, one dark tile. Collision objects selected here and here. 
and I want to define the collision area using this technique. I just draw this black tile behind, under the cave walls, wherever I want to create a barrier for the player. Notice I'm going one tile down, allowing the player to walk behind the top part of the cave. I playtest it. I walk down. Yes, this is exactly what I want. To create an illusion, we are looking at the game world top down, but slightly from an angle. Perfect. The top wall will be done differently. I will actually draw that on collision objects layer because this part can be drawn behind the player character. Let's also do the right side. I made this much more irregular. So I have to work out how these cave tiles connect in a continuous way. A little bit further up, maybe even more. This connects here, maybe this piece here. Now I go back down. Corner connector, hmm, not this one. I guess another corner here and here. Yes, so this is the top wall that I want to be drawn behind the player to further enforce the view from top down under an angle. I select the background layer here, random brush, and I fill the gaps between the ground texture and walls. Now I want to do the side walls, which will also be slightly different. I select a single black tile and I go back to the default brush. Collision objects layer selected here and here. I define the left collision wall like this, all the way down. Maybe I can fill these pieces here as well. I define the right collision wall here like this, with a single layer of black tiles. Perfect. You can see we locked the player in from all sides. It cannot leave the game area anymore. In play mode, I can better see where the connections need to be fixed. I exit the play mode. I use this corner piece block here. Background layer, random brush, and I fill the ground textures here. Back to the default brush. This area needs some attention. I will actually move the corner transition one piece to the right. Black tiles here. Background tile map selected here. I take a block of six dark tiles from this area and I will create a dark left edge. Actually, maybe I want to cover a large area with just black tiles at first as a base. Black tile selected here, filled box tool here. I want to go far enough so that when the player walks all the way to the edge of the cave wall, they cannot see any unpainted area. Background layer selected here to get a highlight. I want some ground dirt tiles here, dark tiles here, dirt tile, dark tile. I will fill this one on the background layer. So whatever is highlighted now is the background layer. Collision objects layer, things that player will collide with, and foreground objects layer, things that are drawn in front of the player. With foreground objects selected here and here, I use Erase tool to delete these. I select objects tile map. I take this dark spike. I would like that to be drawn here, but if I put it on the foreground layer, you will see it deletes the cave foreground tiles. We will need a second foreground layer to achieve this. I right click on the grid, 2D object, tile map, rectangular. I will call it Foreground 2, Inspector tab, Sorting layer will be Foreground, and Order in layer will be 1, on top of the other Foreground layer. Tile palette, and I select Foreground 2. Now I can place my spikes down here. I will also put some on the sides here, up top, and some on the left. I can use this smaller piece in a few places. A few more here. I play and I walk down. Yes, this is exactly what I want. 
Notice they are drawn in front of the player. Let's do the side walls. I select World Tile Palette. I want to draw on foreground objects layer. This tile map has these overhanging side walls and I want player to walk kind of under the protruding stones. Ok, let's plan this transition. I select collision objects here. This piece needs to be on the collision layer. These are the collision tiles, yes. Now I can go to foreground objects tile map here and I select this block. Notice that we have some overhanging rocks that will be drawn on top of the player in front of it. I just tile this left edge all the way down. If you want to build your own tile set, you can skip this part. You can just jump to the next chapter. I will be polishing my level for a little bit longer. Playtest and I walk to the left wall. Perfect. This is exactly what I want. Notice that the cave wall tile map has these barely visible pieces, rocks that are partially hidden in shadow. I can just grab them and place them randomly. I can also grab this bigger side block to draw it in a few places here. This bit on the top side. Maybe this piece here to make the cave go gradually into the darkness. Now I want the right side cave wall. I go all the way down. Some corner pieces here. For this bit, I will use this block. Maybe this. This one here. And then we go down here. I patch a few more tiles here. Shadow pieces all the way down. OK. I will play. Make it larger. And I will walk along the walls. One problem here. This will need fixing. How does this transition from sunny to dark cave wall looks? I'm noticing and remembering some small details and I will fix them when I exit play mode. I also need to make sure we can't see this edge so the black background tiles will need to go deeper. I exit the play mode and I will do some small fixes to make sure the tiles connect. I'm doing this level manually because this is a class for complete beginners. If you need to create many levels, Unity offers tools to automate this process. You can just draw one rough shape and it will automatically decide the right pieces for you. It's called rule tiles. I will explore that deeper in another class. I kind of enjoy painting the level tile by tile myself, but some of you just might want to get things done quicker. Rule tiles take a while to set up, but once you have the logic in place, you can create many different game scenes, levels and map layouts very fast. This is the first project I'm using this beautiful complex cave tile map for, so I'm not fully familiar with it. If you build a big game, you will know your art assets and you will know your tile sets well, trust me. <laughs> I add a few more spikes. I like how we have three different sizes. It creates a lot of detail in what would otherwise be boring black cave walls. The left collision wall made from black tiles is slightly visible here. So I exit play mode, collision objects selected here, and instead I will paint this left collision wall with dirt tiles. Foreground objects black tile, and I patch this. I do the same thing for the right side of the map. Now I have the patch of grass here, surrounded by dirt. I need to do the transition around it, like we did in the first part of this video. This process can also be automated using rule tiles. I will just go all around the grass patch and I will create the edges to make it look nice. I think I'm going to time lapse this part because we already explained how these pieces fit together and I'm sure you want to create your own layout that will be different to mine. I will then place some ground clutter objects like patches of moss and some stones. When I'm happy with my level, I enter play mode and I will walk around to spot any potential issues. 
just making sure all my cave walls and all the grass patches connect seamlessly. Also making sure we can't see outside the painted area, which we can still see here on the left. So background time up here, simple black tile and filled box paintbrush. I will just go much deeper to make sure we cover far enough. I select collision objects here. We also have some underground lake tiles. These can also be organized into any shape. I will simply use a rectangular shape here, but feel free to build some complex lakes and rivers. And we even have bridges here. Where do I want my lake? Maybe in this corner. This is where my player goes to fish and swim. I can also go to objects. These four bottom tiles on the collision objects layer. This will be on the foreground objects layer so that the player can walk behind the top spike. Yes, this is fine. Maybe a capsule collider instead of a box collider on the player could work better here to slide along the edges of obstacles. I go check out my fishing lake. It's on the collision layer, so I can't jump inside. Okay, I adjust my windows. Let's have a look at the game camera. Player object selected here. I center the position inside the transform component. Then I select main camera and I center it as well here. You can see some imperfections between tiles when we walk. They will disappear if you select the correct aspect ratio. For example, full HD here will fix that. With pixel art, we can also sometimes experience some issues with camera motion. I can fix that by selecting main camera, add component and pixel perfect camera. Let's see. I want reference resolution to be some values divisible by 32. So for example, 320 times 192 and pixels per unit will be 32 here. You can see some imperfections between tiles. If I set this to full HD, it should fix that. That's better. We can add more advanced camera motion as well. I go to Window and Package Manager. These are packages installed in our project. I go to Unity Registry if I want to find more packages to install. I search for Cinemachine. I find it here and I click Install. I add it here, Cinemachine, Virtual Camera. You can see it disabled the main game camera and it took over its role. I select Virtual Camera here and I want to drag player object into the Follow field. There is a bit of an animation now to the camera motion. Camera feels a bit heavier. I think this is pretty good. With the new virtual camera selected, I go down here to extensions and I add extension called Cinemachine Pixel Perfect. Now I can change the value here in ortho size to set the distance of the camera. We have a game world for the player to discover and explore and we have a pixel perfect animated virtual camera following us around. I can go here to Tile Palette window with Objects Palette open and we have some crystals and mushrooms. These could be, for example, collectible items in the game. For now, I will just select Collision Objects Time up here and maybe I can place some of these crystals as solid obstacles in the world. This corner around the lake is wet, so maybe some of these mushrooms grow here. And in this corner, partially in the sun, the dirt crystallizes into these differently colored shapes. The tile palette we are using has a lot of things we can use for many different gameplay features. We have some solid ground objects, crystals and mushrooms that the player will collide with. We learned a lot today. I go to Window, Layout, Default to reset my Unity panels so that we all see the same thing. Also, don't forget to save your changes. In the next part, we will learn how to add button elements and how to write a very simple script to quit the game after clicking a button. And since we're talking about clicking buttons, you can click the like if you're getting some value. See ya!